Hi, everybody. Just a quick little class, little sort of mini session here uh, for the new year, just uh, recording here New Year's Eve, uh, wishing everyone uh, Dharma blessings and all best wishes and uh, Dharma realizations and so forth um, for 2024. And maybe we continue to um, practice together and study together and uh, pray together um, in the coming year. So just wanted to finish just with a, a tiny little bit of a teaching here and just some blessings around the Pranjaparamita Banjo just to sort of finish our um, Heart Sutra course for the year. So we have just sort of finishing the year with emptiness or uh, and then starting the new year with emptiness, so to speak, uh, with the Heart Sutra. We can just feel that everything here is just about letting go of uh, the old energy of 2023, um, you know, emptiness being you know, almost like chit cutting, just cutting uh, all the delusions and self grasping that we have, but also um, emptiness, that space, uh, sort of the, the natureless nature of conventional reality uh, allows for creativity. So 2024 is also by starting with emptiness, we're having a whole new space for new things uh, to develop, especially new Dharma things in our lives. So that's sort of my wish for everybody today, just before uh, we flip over to the new year. So starting with the Heart Sutra here, homage to the perfection of wisdom of the Blessed Mother. Thus I've heard at one time the Blessed One was falling in Rajgir and Mass Walter's Mother, get a great assembly of monks, nuns and a great assembly of Bodhisattvas. That time the Blessed One was absorbed in the concentration of countless aspects of phenomena called profound illumination. That time also Spiro Vadocharya, the Bodhisattva, the great being, was looking perfect to practice profound perfection of wisdom. Perfect yet the five aggregates being empty and inherent existence. Then through the power of Buddha, Venerable Sharia, put your sentence Spiro Vadocharya, the Bodhisattva, the great being. How should a son, lineage, a son of the lineage train who wishes to engage in the practice of profound perfection of wisdom? Thus he spoke in Spiro Vadocharya, the Bodhisattva, the great being, re replied to Venerable Sharia, put your as follows. Shari Putra, whatever son or daughter of the lineage wishes to engage in the practice of profound perfection of wisdom, should look perfectly like this. Subsequent looking perfectly and correctly, also the five aggregates being empty of inherent existence, form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is none other than form. Form is also none other than emptiness. Likewise, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shari Putra, the self phenomena, emptiness having no characteristics, they are produced and do not cease. They have no defilement, no separation from defilement. They have no decrease and no increase. Therefore, Shari put you in emptiness. There is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, compositional factors, and no consciousness. There is no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mentality, no form, no sound, no smell, no taste, no tattoo object, no phenomenon. There is no eye element, so forth, up to a mentality element, and also up to no element of mental consciousness. There is no ignorance, and no exhaustion of ignorance, and so forth, up to no aging and death, no exhaustion of aging and death. Likewise, there is no suffering, origin, cessation, or path, no exalted awareness, no attainment, also no non-attainment. Therefore, Shari Pachi, because there is no attainment, Bodhisattvas rely on and abide in perfection of wisdom. Their minds have no obstructions and no fear. Passing on and being on perversity, they attain the final nirvana. Also, all Buddhas reside perfectly in three times, having relied upon the perfection of wisdom, became manifest, complete Buddhas, in the state of unsurpassed, perfect, complete enlightenment. Therefore, the mantra of perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, Equal to the equal mantra, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering, since it's not false, should be known as the truth. Mantra perfection wisdom is proclaimed. Tayata om gada gada paragada para sabgadi bodhi soha. Sharaputra bodhisattva great being should train the profound perfection wisdom like this. The blessed one arose in that concentration and said to Spravalashwar the bodhisattva the great being that had spoken mom. Good good of lynch is like that, since it's like that just as you have revealed, in that way the profound perfection wisdom should be practiced and Tatha Gadas will also rejoice. When the Blessed One had said this, the Venerable Shari Putra, Spirit of Avashvara, the Bodhisattva, the Great Being, the entire circle's disciples, well as worldly beings, gods, humans, demigods, and spirits, would you like to highly praise what had been spoken by the Blessed One? So we can just take a moment here to take refuge to three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, and Sang, in particular, um, sort of symbolized or embodied by the two figures here in an open sky above us, uh, shining down blessing energy on us and all sentient beings. Two figures of Prajna Paramita, um, the uh, sort of Sophia goddess uh, of perfectional wisdom, and Buddha Shakyamuni, both made out of gold and light, like two suns in the, the sky here. And go, I and all sentient beings to which even light go for refuge to Buddha Dharma and Sangha. I and all sentient beings to which even light go for refuge.
package to put a dharma and sangha. I know Sinti means to achieve the limit called package to put a dharma and sangha. Generating our awakening mind of great compassion, wanting to reach awakening for enlightenment for the benefit of all, to bring them that same state. Through the virtues we collect by giving and other perfections, may we become a Buddha for the benefit of all. Through the virtues we collect by giving and other perfections, may we become a Buddha for the benefit of all. Through the virtues we collect by giving and other perfections, may we become a Buddha for the benefit of all. Generating love, compassion, joy, and equanimity in our minds right now. May everyone be happy. May everyone be free from misery. May no one ever be separated from their happiness, and may everyone have equanimity free from hatred and attachment. Now we're in the seven limb practice here, we're going to do a prostration, showing signs of respect to the Buddha fig figures here, our merit field, all three jewels, having an open heart here, making offerings. Confession and rejoicing, so again, letting go, uh, overcoming our negativities, bad habits, and so forth, and rejoicing open-heartedly um, at all the goodness in ourselves and others. Requesting that all holy beings, all light beings, all of our gurus stay with us and continue to guide us and teach us, and dedicating all of this for the awakening of all. You just feel with that uh, golden light that's coming down from Prashna Paramita and Buddha Shakyamuni into us and all sentient beings into the world here. I may receive. So empowering us in our sort of practice and understanding of emptiness and um, the Heart Sutra. Okay, so I just wanted to give just a quick little commentary to finish our uh, course on um, the Heart Sutra. And I've uh, got just a couple of texts here to give sort of a little bit of a variety of different interpretations here. Of, uh, well, they're all pretty consistent, to be honest, but the, um, you know, on the mantra of uh, the Prajaparamita mantra, that's of course mentioned at uh, the end of the sutra. Okay, so. Um, and hang in here, I'll just get, okay. So just for my notes, which if you want to just sort of a general understanding of um, what the mantra means. So basically we have at the heart, sort of like the heart sutra mantra. So we're condensing all the Prajaparamita perfection of wisdom teachings from Buddha Shakyamuni, the second turning of the wheel of Dharma at Rajgir, uh, Walter's Peak uh, Mountain, uh, Bihar state in India, like 2,500 years or so, and you've got, it's, oh, I guess it's 100,000 lines, and I think there's a smaller one, again, you don't have to look, I'll go on Wikipedia or something, it might be 30,000 lines, and there might be a small one, 7,000, I can't remember, again, I don't want to sort of come out there and say this, but you can, again, look that up, the Braja Barmia, so there's different lengths, uh, the famous one, of course, I'm just looking at it right now, Edward Conze's uh, translation of it, it's a blue book and it says a large sutra of perfection or perfect wisdom. You can get that and that's uh, from you know the bookstore or online or Amazon. The translation English of the full Prajnaparamita Sutra, 100,000 verses. Then ultimately it's condensed down to the very short one page of the Heart Sutra, the beating heart of these teachings on emptiness in the second turn of the wheel of Dharma. And then you can condense that further to the um, mantra, uh, the uh, Prajaparamita mantra here. So Tayata, Um Gati Gata Paragata Parasam Gati Bodhi Soha. So what's the meaning of this? So Taya Tayata, so basic translation is that this is the way it is. So you want to know the truth or the way things are, this is it. That's sort of the, the almost like the prefix or the, the opening uh, syllable of the mantra here. Tayata, this is the way it is. Om, of course, is the holy body of the Buddhists, primal vibration, kind of like the sigh of the world, as John Coltrane used to, to call it there in the mid-60s. Um, the first gate, so tayata, om, gate, which means to go, 
go. So in this case, following what we've been talking about with the Heart Sutra, it's to follow kind of like the first path, which is the path of accumulation, accumulating all the merit, purifying the negativity. So this is also kind of a sense of go to your Lama, go to your teacher, go to someone that's communicating the path, start the process, start your journey. So this is the way it is, owned in the big nature of things, the whole kind of show here, uh, nature reality, go. Get started, go. Second gate is the second path, go again. So go, go, get started, and then what are you starting to meditate on? Path of preparation, of course, the study uh, and meditation on emptiness. In this case, more of sort of the intellectual, conceptual or verbal descriptions of emptiness. Paragate means go beyond. So go, go, and go beyond. Keep going, but also at this point, transcending, sort of breaking through, so to speak, almost like the doors break on through to the other side of the old 60s song there. So this is the third path of the path of seeing, seeing emptiness directly. So it also means it's kind of like keep going, surpass. Again, break on through, go, go, go through, you know, break on through keep going, surpass, parasamgate, which means go beyond perfectly. So this is the fourth path, path of habituation, path of vintage, or as I've been calling it, the path of embodiment, to embody that experience of seeing emptiness directly in your life. Take it from the heavens down to earth, be it. So at this point, go beyond perfectly. It's like go beyond and stay beyond. Leave it all behind. Kind of like exploding, leaving planet Earth, so to speak, in the rocket ship. Next, uh, so Bodhi is a, then what happens? Enlightenment. Bodhi, of course, is enlightenment. You know, Bodhi Chita, sort of the awakened mind. And then Soha, that's it. Sealed, finished. So mote it be, as they say. So there you go. Tayata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasamgate Bodhi Soha. So that's it. You've done it. Finished. You're enlightened. <laughs> so that's all in the um, just the one mantra, which is amazing. So when you're singing this, you're singing the Heart Sutra. You're singing the five paths to enlighten. You're singing emptiness, not just emptiness, but how to realize emptiness, how to be emptiness, so to speak. Uh, another little commentary, Art of Wisdom, Geshekal Sengatso's um, great book. they have got the old edition here from the 1980s, I think, 1986. And um, he says here in, in this edition, anyway, the old one here in, in uh, page 131. So Vala begins uh, part of his answer by explaining the qualities of the perfection of wisdom. The phrase, therefore the mantra perfection of wisdom, refers to the perfection of wisdom as a mantra. In general, mantra means protection for the mind. Here, the perfection of wisdom is called mantra because it principally protects our mind from the two obscurations and fears associated with them. The perfection of wisdom is called the mantra of great knowledge because it knows the great seal or emptiness. Also, perfection of wisdom is called unsurpassed mantra because there's no mantra that is superior to the perfection of wisdom or emptiness. Furthermore, it is called the equal to the unequal mantra because there's no other mantra that is in e uh, even equal to the perfection of wisdom, emptiness. Perfection of wisdom is also the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering because through the sincere practice of perfection of wisdom, sentient beings are able to eliminate all their sufferings completely, leaving samsara, going to nirvana through an experience of emptiness. Since it's not false, it should be known as the truth. It teaches that we should understand that the perfection of wisdom is non-fallacious, the perfection of wisdom protects us from all fears and pacifies all of our suffering, and therefore it will never deceive us. The mantra perfection of wisdom is proclaimed. It introduces the explanation of how to practice perfection of wisdom. The explanation is in the form of the mantra, Tayata Om Gata Gata Paragata Parasamgati Bodhisoha. This mantra, retained in the original Sanskrit, explains in a very condensed form the practice of the five Mahayana paths, which are achieved in complete dependence upon the perfection of wisdom. 
which is really good. And uh, Gashkal saying Yasuo says the same kinds of things. I will read this here. Why not? So Tayata means it is like this and indicates that whoever belongs to the Mahayana lineage and wishes to practice the path of perfection wisdom should practice as follows. Sanskrit syllable Om is composed of three Sanskrit letters A, U, Um, which in this case are three represent the body, speech, and mind of the person who is traveling to great enlightenment. In some texts, this Om does not appear in the mantra, but since it's included in many authoritative commentaries in Sutra, I personally feel it's good to include this syllable here. Also, in many monasteries in Tibet, there is a practice of reciting the mantra, the perfectionism, by a great assembly of monks in order to avert hindrances. And normally on occasions, Om was recited as part of the mantra. I'll be honest, this is why I always, before I do anything, recite the Heart Sutras, a way of overcoming obstacles, but also always reminding me to start like everything from the perspective of emptiness like let's buddhism is just about emptiness in the big picture so let's always start with emptiness whatever we do let's have it in that context first gante means go this does not mean that we should be go to an external place but teaches that through generating the mind of enlightenment we should go or proceed to the mahayana path of accumulation having done this we should practice the stages of the path of method and wisdom on the path of accumulation Second gate again means go, and this teaches that having improved on the stages of the path of method and wisdom of the path of accumulation, we should go to the Mahayana path of preparation. Having re reached the second Mahayana path, we should practice the stages of the path of method and wisdom on the path of preparation. Paragati means perfectly go, and teaches that we should not remain in the path of preparation permanently. Having improved on the stages of the path of method and wisdom on the path of preparation, we should go to the Mahayana path of seeing, the third path and the path of great enlightenment. We perfectly go to the path of seeing because the path of seeing is a superior path beyond ordinary paths. Having attained the Mahayana path of seeing, we need to practice the stages of the path of method and wisdom of this third Mahayana path. Para Sangati means perfectly and completely go. This teaches that we should uh, also not remain in the path of seeing. Having progressed in the stages of the path of method and wisdom, the path of seeing, we should go to the Mahayana path of meditation, the fourth path of path of great enlightenment. Perfectly and completely go indicates that the Mahayana path of meditation is not only beyond ordinary paths, but also superior to the path of seeing. Therefore, we need to progress on this path. Having done this, we need to practice the stages of the path of method and wisdom and the Mahayana path of meditation. Bodhi means enlightenment. It teaches that we must complete the practice of the stages of the path of method and wisdom on the path of meditation, attain the fifth and final Mahayana path, the path of no more learning. When we achieve this path, we have achieved great enlightenment. Soha means build the foundation. Here it teaches that initially we should build the foundation of the path of accumulation. Then gradually we should build the foundation of the path of preparation and so forth until we attain final enlightenment or Buddhahood. In summary, this mantra teaches us how to practice the perfection of wisdom that is the five Mahayana paths. Anyone who wishes to achieve great enlightenment should practice these five paths progressively, successively, and completely. And then just um, finally, I um, wanted to read this commentary on it here. Um, right here. Um, by one of my absolute favorite books, which is Shogun Tukur Rinpoche's Cutting Through Spiritual Materialism, an absolute masterpiece and Dharma classic. And of course, this, the final, actually not the final one, but one of the, 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 the chapters close to the end here is on shunyata or emptiness. And it has the most delightful uh, line, uh, picture or drawing of Prajnaparamita. I don't know if you can see that very well, but anyway, that's a really, really beautiful um, picture of her. So it says here, the Heart Sutra ends with the great spell, great spell or mantra. It says in the Tibetan version, therefore the mantra of transcendent knowledge, the mantra of deep insight, the unsurpassed mantra, the unequaled mantra, the mantra that calms all suffering, should be known as the truth, for there is no deception. The potency of this mantra comes not from some imagined mystical or magical power of the words, but from their meaning. It's interesting that after discussing shunyata, form is empty, emptiness is form, form is none other than emptiness, emptiness is identical with form, and so on, the sutra goes on to discuss mantra. At the beginning, it speaks in terms of the meditative state, and finally it speaks of mantra or words. This is because in the beginning, we must develop a confidence in our understanding or clearing out of all preconceptions. 
nihilism, eternalism, all beliefs that have to be cut through or transcended. And when a person is completely exposed, fully unclothed, fully unmasked, completely naked, completely opened, at that very moment he sees the power of the word. When the basic, absolute, ultimate hypocrisy has been unmasked, then one really begins to see the jewel shining in its brightness, the energetic, living quality of openness, the living quality of surrender, the living quality of renunciation. Renunciation in this instance is not just throwing away, but having thrown everything away, we begin to feel the living quality of peace. And this particular peace is not a feeble peace, feeble openness, but has a strong character, an invincible quality, an unshakable quality, because it admits no gaps of hypocrisy. It is complete peace in all direction, so that not even a speck of dark corner exists for doubt or hypocrisy. Complete openness is complete victory because we do not know fear. We do not try to defend ourselves at all. Therefore, this is a great mantra. One would have thought that instead of saying Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasam Gate Bodhisoha, this mantra would say something about Shinyata, Om Shinyata Ma Shinyata, or something of the sort. But instead it says Gate Gate, gone, gone, gone beyond, completely gone. This is much stronger than saying Shinyata or emptiness. Because the word Shinyata might imply a philosophical interpretation. Instead of formulating something philosophical, this mantra exposes that which lies beyond philosophy. Therefore, it is gate gate, gone, given up, got rid of, opened. The first gate is rid of the veil of conflicting emotions. The second gate represents the veil of primitive beliefs about reality. That's the first gate represents the idea that form is empty. And the second gate refers to emptiness as form. Then the next word of the mantra is paragate, gone beyond, completely exposed. Now form is form, paragate, and it's not uh, only that form is form, but emptiness is emptiness, parasamgate, completely gone beyond. Bodhi, bodhi here means completely awake. The meaning is given up, completely unmasked, naked, completely open. So has traditional ending for mantras, which means so be it, gone, gone, gone beyond, completely aw exposed, awake, so be it. So I'll uh, recite that again. Gone, gone, gone beyond, completely exposed, awake, so be it. Gone, gone, gone beyond, completely exposed, awake, so be it. In the end, gone, 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 we let go. Let go of the ego, let go of inherent existence, let go of everything. So three times to celebrate with our chid drum. Chid is all about cut, pay or cut, cutting through of emptiness, cutting through the ego, cutting through of fear. So just three mantras here for the new year for us, how we can sing together. Two, three. Tayata, Om. Gate, Gate. Vara, Gate. Vara, Sam. And that's it. Let's just dedicate all of this, all of our practices here, all of our prayers, everything for the awakening of all beings. May all beings realize emptiness. May all beings be liberated from samsara. May all beings reach nirvana. Okay, happy new year and see you in a few hours, so to speak, into the new year, 2024. Okay, lots of dharma love.